July 26th, 2019. This is Nerd Bourbon episode 112. I'm Seth Sturgill. And I'm Todd Sturgill. I swear to God, I thought it was episode 111. No, that was last week, bro. Fuck. <laughs> Remember I made the Vault 111 joke? Oh yeah, you did. The classic, the classic me, Todd. Classic me. But, uh, you know, I'm not surprised. Everything is a blur for me now, so. <laughs> you know, I, I feel like we're just going to, the few listeners that we've already had are going to stop tuning in because they're just sick of your depressing ass. Woo-hoo! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> they're like, I don't want to listen. This guy just makes me fucking sad every week. <laughs> <laughs> and I've done my job. No, I was just playing. <laughs> Shit. Uh. You sabotaged this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. We've got a lot on our plate this week. A lot to cover this week. We've got, we're have got we going we're gonna to talk about, obviously, the, uh, the big news coming out of San Diego Comic-Con, chiefly the Marvel-related news. We're going to talk about a new Overwatch character that has been released. Uh, we are going to talk about the dreaded Joy-Con drift that has been plaguing some people. We're going to talk about demo impressions of Oninaki. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we, we've got we've got some shit on our plate this week. But before we get into that, Todd, what have you been playing? Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare Remastered. Uh, yeah, I remember you, you were fucking around with like a couple Call of Duty games, right? Oh uh, yeah, I uh, so I got off work uh, this past Friday, the beginning of my uh, beginning of my my week basically, with my friend uh, Ronald. So hey, you wanna hang out? I'm like, sure, why not? Uh, I ended up uh, just kind of chilling, just hanging out with him. I made him, I fucked him up with some hot sauce. It was hilarious. Yes. Uh. <laughs> And then, uh, yeah, I ended up downloading Black Ops 1, and that was fun. Isn't there still, like, a lot of people playing it? Yeah, it's like, 73,000 people? Or, like, no, that was just in Team Deathmatch. I think it was, like, 90-something. Yeah. I was like, damn, Black Ops 1, this game came out, like, a while ago, shit. Yeah? I mean, that game came out in, what, 2010 or something like that? If not, yeah, that sounds about right. But, yeah, I ended up playing that. Yeah, 2010. Yeah. And again, it just it just kind of got me in the mood to play other Call of Duties, which to the point now I've kind of like I've decided that I'm more than likely going to be picking up uh, the new one on day one. Yeah, Modern Warfare. Yeah, I'm just in the way like just in where I'm at like mentally right now and just like with like all, with work and whatnot, like shooters just kind of fit right into the mold of shit that I want to play, just quick and easy. Do do you feel like you might change your tune though, by the time November rolls around? Because that, or is it October that that game comes out? It's either late October, or early November. I can't remember. Well, we'll find out when when it gets there. But right at the moment, I'm definitely eyeing it as a day one purchase right now. Yeah, I mean, we we talked about this last week when you sort of, you know, when you when you sort of get into that state or whatever, you go back to your comfort zone and your comfort zone of shooters, and that's fine. But I sort of wonder if you're still going to be feeling this way when you've got Monster Hunter and Borderlands and, you know, are you really going to be in Jedi Fallen Order even? Well, we'll like, see how the depression flows around that time. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's that's fair, I guess. I, just for me, I'm telling you, after we picked up Black Ops 4 for like half off, like two weeks after it came out, I cannot justify paying full price for a Call of yeah. Duty game ever again. I mean, I feel that. But yeah, after playing like Black Ops uh, One, which was a lot of fun, don't be wrong. It was like, shit, I really wouldn't mind playing like on my PS4 because I just prefer playing games on my PS4. And I was like, oh, they got a, they got that standalone version of like uh, Call of Duty Four Remastered. So I bought that. You didn't grab it when it was uh, PlayStation no. Plus. No. Oh, you're a fucking fool, sir. I didn't even know. I'm gonna be honest. I didn't even know they had it on there as a PlayStation Plus. Yeah, it was. Plus. What like I think it was either. I think it was like two months ago. They yeah. had it on PlayStation. Didn't even Plus. give a shit again. Oh, uh, do you see? So you got to do what I do. You got to get into the habit of so, every no, month. No, let, me, let me tell you something. I don't remember two months ago. 
that's that's fine. But you just got to remember the present, and you got to get into the I habit don't remember of that. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Todd! <laughs> I'm sick of this shit. <laughs> get get out of your bullshit. I'm sick of it. I'm uh, fucking sick of it. Uh, I think it's funny. <laughs> Nobody else does. It's sad and it's annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. No, uh, on some real shit though. Literally once a month, hop onto the PlayStation Plus and just check off. Just add the games to your inventory. Basically, you know what it's it, free. You know, it's, there's nothing. I, I feel that, but my issue with it is like half the time I just don't care about any of the games on PlayStation Plus because I, I used to do that. I used to do that, but I kind of just stopped because like it's just they really haven't been like. That well, good? here's well. Here's the deal. Even if they're, even if it's something you don't care about, it's free. <laughs> like, who knows? Maybe you get fucking whacked on the head, and all of a sudden you want to play fucking Fat Princess or NBA Two K Nineteen. <laughs> now I you have say it. Right, tell you right now, uh, probably not. <laughs> probably not. But why not? It's free. You're not having to download. It's not taking up any real estate. The only thing it takes is thirty seconds of your time. My time is valuable valuable for me to do nothing but uh yeah yeah <laughs> but yeah i ended up playing some uh call of duty 4 and i still got it i was still sh- still shitting on people felt bad for him actually so uh, how, you, how are you getting beat by this 80 year old man <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was a good time Again, I wish they didn't add like the uh, the loot box bullshit to that game, but it's fine. That really... honestly turned me off of the entire experience. Right, rightfully right, no, rightfully so. Like I don't blame anybody for kind of like falling off that game after that. Like I own it. Like it's you know again, I I grabbed it. It was free. It's cool and all. I played it for a little while, like when it first was like a pack in for Advanced Warfare or whatever, but it just was not. Uh, they 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 have like bullshitified that game too much. I'm yeah. good. Yeah, it's uh, I mean it still plays like very much like Call of Duty Four, but there's like shit they added like new weapons and all that bullshit. It's like there's no there was no need to do that. But did I talk did I talk about GTA last week? Yes. All right, good. Yeah, you yeah, mentioned that you I were playing that. Down, I, I don't have to go down that rabbit hole of uh, the danger of me playing that game. <laughs> oh shit. Oh, uh, have you have you spent any real world money? No, not yet. <laughs> yet being the key word. Yes. <laughs> I know what I am. That's why we've had this talk before. Like I, why I would never go to a casino. That's true. Yeah. It is. I mean, it is gambling, is it not? Yeah. I mean, I don't give a shit. I'll, I'll be the first to admit that it definitely is gambling. You know, it's weird though, that, and I don't. I don't really understand why. A, I, look, gambling addiction is real, whatever, but I don't understand why there's this whole, like, oh, we're trying to, like, criminalize loot boxes and stuff like that, because at the end of the day, like, you're the one that's pulling the trigger on that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like... Yeah, it's, the, it's, it is, uh, the reason, the reason, well, the reason loot boxes, like, blew up like this is because people were fucking buying them, you know? Right. It's like... See, I, I here's the I can admit that I have a fucking problem. Yeah, that's what I was just gonna say. At least, at least with you, you're totally complacent to it, and you're you you admit like, oh, uh, you know, like I, I'm totally, you know, I, I I will spend money on loot boxes or whatever. Like, I'm not the type of person that will usually do it. There are a few rare exceptions when I feel like they're worth my money. Like I, I've spent you know a ton of money on Overwatch and stuff, but other back than that, we were, uh, back when we were some fucking solid skin fiends. Yeah, I mean, I don't really... Other than that, I don't think I really buy microtransactions at all. And they usually turn me off. But for some people, they they love it. And, you know, and maybe it is a little predatory. But at the end of the day, you're still the one that has to pull that trigger. I've always had this stance on it. Like, for somebody that doesn't have as much time to, like you know sit there and put the time in to get those like loot boxes like normally like you're just like leveling up and shit versus somebody who you know puts the time in with their job and just just says fuck it boom done yeah and that's completely and that's completely fine like i don't take issue with the nature of loot boxes i take issue with the whole the stance of like 
Because for one thing, the reason loot boxes are so prevalent is because people pay for them. People do buy them. And if they weren't, like if people actually just voted with their wallet and stopped buying them, then they wouldn't be a thing anymore. And then, on, and the, I think the the thought of criminalizing them, like I, I think actually in Europe now or something like that, you have to notate if your game has microtransactions now. Which I think is fine, but at the same time it's like, there's all these discussions of like actually criminalizing it and i'm like no that's a, are are we in a society now where just nobody can fucking take the blame for their own actions like you're the one that is spending the money they're not forcing you to spend the money period there's no there's no such thing nobody's forcing you to do shit you're choosing to do that like own up to your own shit people want to play the victim I was, yeah, I was preyed upon. They, 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 they completely, you know, they, they played to my addiction. I'm like, what? <laughs> and get some fucking help. Like, like you said, you, you can admit that you have a problem with it, so you ain't walking into a casino. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's it just, uh, it's absurd. Yeah, there's reasons why I don't play certain games where I know, because like games like, I mean, GTA nowadays, I think it's way better to make money. Than it used uh-huh. to be. Because, like, bro, it used to be like, dude, d- d- buy some of that shit in the game. It was like, like, how many hours of time did you put in to get that money? I didn't have that time. Even then, I didn't have that fucking time. So I'm like, shark card? Ha! Whew! <laughs> <laughs> Done. Yeah, it, it really it really doesn't bother me. Like, the, the nature of loot boxes don't bother me. The, the only, I mean, as a gamer, I guess... The only way in which loot boxes really affect me is I do find it really annoying when games tie their kind of central mechanics around it. I mean, that's, for example, that's why I really dislike the recent crop of NetherRealm games, for example. Yeah. Because the central gameplay hooks are tied around loot boxes. The whole armor, the new armor and shit, like the gear. Yeah, the gear systems and stuff, and even though I'm, you, I'm personally not a fan of the gear systems. I hate it. I hate I don't it. like. I don't like using. I don't like gear stats in most games. Well, especially not in fighting games. I mean, that's. Uh, I mean, again, like that's the reason why I kind of like fell back into uh, For Honor when I realized they kind of like changed that shit. For For Honor, sort of feels like a fighting game in a weird way. Oh, it has like it has that like kind of like flow kind of yeah, like kind of weird. Well, yeah. and and what what I mean also by this is just the idea of like everybody that is ever going to play this character has the exact same like like skill like the exact same sort of like playing field that i do and it is by my skill that i can be better or worse than somebody not because of my gear not because of the money i put in or whatever that's why i like smash so much like regardless of the fact like like when you when you play uh, Olimar, or when I play Olimar, we're both going to be trash, <laughs> you know, but it's going to be because of our skill. It's not going to be because, oh, I have this fucking super good helmet for Olimar. Can I say, can I say some shit? I feel like they've been giving me Olimar a little too much, so I've kind of had to start getting a little decent with them. You start and to it, learn a little bit. It annoys me, bro. I'm like, I don't want to learn that shit character. <laughs> I've been where you are. I've walked that road. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in those boots. Uh, but but no, I but of course, you know, Smash even has like the concept of spirits, but those to me that's the way to do it. You have to earn spirits. You have to sp- spirits can give you that little bit of a boost, but it's also not it's completely optional. Like we don't play with spirits. Yeah, cuz I don't have any. <laughs> and, and meanwhile, I've got all of them. So again, it's not it's it's the differentiating factor. To me, I think that's the ideal way to do it. In, in a fighting game especially, it's like, don't fucking give me stat-boosting gear. I, I hate that. And then again, with the NetherRealm games, it's become like a central like focal point of their gameplay between Mortal Kombat 11 and Injustice 2 that completely turned me off. Yeah. Completely turned me off. And I never spent a dime in Injustice 2. But the fact that I still had to interact with the loot boxes at all really annoyed me. Did not like it. Anyway, that's a little bit of a tangent. <laughs> a little loot box tangent there. There's nothing wrong with that. Anything else? Anything else you've been playing? Or has it just been a bunch of Call of Duty for the most part? 
I mean, that's the thing. Like, I, and then when I'm working, I only really play maybe. I mean, obviously, I still play a little bit of Realm Royale. Yeah. Occasionally. Uh, a little bit of Apex. Uh, other than that, nah. Just been kind of waiting for my days off to, I don't know, play something else. Even though I know in my heart I'll be playing more of the same. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's, that's up to you, though, Todd. This is what I keep trying to tell you. It's up to you. I You're the one that has to make that change. Me. No, I'm just <laughs> You don't have to. You're the one that has to flip that switch. You can jump on Xenoblade. You can play really Xenoblade. Know. Xenoblade's too much. It's not too much. It's too big of a plate. You say that in your own head, but it's not. It's not. Get out of your comfort zone. It's the only way you will grow beyond this. But we, we both know you're just going to twiddle your thumbs for another month and a half until Monster Hunter comes out. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I know where my where my heart truly lies. Iceborne. Whatever the case may be, Xenoblade has been my primary game this week. Been kind of busy with, uh, with some stuff, but uh, in terms of gaming, Xenoblade's been the main one. I'm in the home stretch. I was hoping to have the game beat by the time we recorded this, but that did not end up happening. I'm very close to the end, though. I'm in the final chapter. I've got probably like an hour or two of game in front of me. I mean, I'm right there. I gotta say, in the final moments of the game, like now that I'm in the in the final, I would say, three chapters or so, it is really... The story is so good in this game. Like, it's really kind of elevated it beyond into like some of my favorite... JRPGs. I mean, I'm not ashamed to say it got a few tears out of me <laughs> several times throughout this game's story to where I'm like, wow, I I really, I've put about 80 hours into the game now. And I mean, like, you feel really attached to these characters. And one of the things that I really enjoy about the game is the way that it lets you relate to the villains like the quote unquote villains and like like the mark of a good villain is when you can understand their motive and stuff like that but moreover than that i mean you can relate to them and they they don't seem like they're necessary they're not evil for the sake of it you know they have reasons for doing what they're doing and all the characters grow in significant ways and i just really 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 like it now field skills notwithstanding i still think field skills are a terrible design mechanic i don't like them at all but i mean beyond that i mean the combat has done nothing but get better and deeper and just the world and the story and again the music i can't say enough good things about xenoblade chronicles 2 i really love it it was one of those games where i just kind of bought it on a whim and i didn't know how much i was going to enjoy it but it is i mean it is on a list for sure of some of my favorite jrpgs of all time so it's it's one of those things where like I have the final Assassin's Creed Odyssey DLC and I have like no interest in playing it on some real shit. Like mm-hmm. I turned it on, I fooled around with it for like an hour and just I just wanted to go back to Xenoblade. So I don't know. I I will end up playing it eventually, but for now I just don't really care to jump into Odyssey right now. Beyond that, I don't think you got a chance to play. Did you get a chance to play the Oninaki demo? I did not. Yeah, Honestly, so... Honestly, with what you told me, I kind of was kind of, eh. Yeah, I mean, part of me kind of wants to encourage you to try it, because I feel like you might actually enjoy it. You already failed, though. You already failed at encouraging me. <laughs> well, I just don't think the things that annoy me about it are going to annoy you as much. I, I th- In other words, I think you're easier to please than I am. Because... Here, here's here's the deal. So, I I had read that I was on Twitter and I had read that there was a demo for Oninaki and I was interested in the game, right? Like, the the game, the game was interesting to me from the trailers and stuff that we had seen from it. It's a new game from Tokyo RPG Factory, which is Square Enix's kind of little or like kind of almost an indie studio. They made I Am Setsuna, which was a game that I liked a lot. And they made Lost Sphere, which I never played, but I heard it was, like, kind of bad. And now they're making this as their third game. And the trailers all looked really good and interesting. Your play is this character who uh, is called a Watcher, who is kind of like a... 
he's part of a group of, I guess, kind of mini Grim Reapers a little bit. Like, you're harboring lost souls and, like, kind of, like, helping the dead and stuff like that. And it's it's interesting. The world itself is interesting and the characters are interesting. And I cannot take that away from the game. But, like, I, I download this demo and I'm playing it and I just, I cannot believe... As I'm, as I'm playing it in the back of my head the entire time and I and I hate to I hate to bring like dollars and price into stuff but just to be honest with you the entire time I'm playing it nagging at the back of my head as I'm like they're charging fifty dollars for this game fifty dollars for this game makes no sense whatsoever I, the the game graphically does not look like a fifty dollar game I'm you know lengthwise yeah maybe it's long. But who cares? I mean, the production values are not there. The game doesn't run like butter or anything like that. It runs okay. I had several frame drops, especially running around in the little hub city. I mean, it's framey as hell. It was definitely below 30 frames in the hub city, for sure. I don't know if if it's... And then I tried to justify it by being like, well, maybe this isn't a final build, but I think it is a final build because... The game comes out in like a few weeks and you can transfer your save data into the main mm. game. Mm-mm-mm. So I think that is the final build. And maybe they'll optimize it post patch, maybe it's maybe it's because I'm on the Switch version, I don't know. Either way, it's framey. It's not very it, it's not optimized very well. Gameplay-wise, and this is where I think you might actually kind of enjoy it, it sort of reminds me of like it's it's interesting. It, it, it's like a hack and slash kind of game, almost a top down Diablo kind of thing. But it's it, it also has like the kind of mechanic. You know, I was just talking about Xenoblade. It kind of reminds me of Xenoblade in that way, where you can get these. Uh, I forget the stupid name that they have in the game, but you can get these kind of like spirits that are manifested in different weapon types, exactly like Xenoblade. And they, they all have, like, different abilities and stuff like that. And you can switch between them on the fly and stuff. It's basically directly lifted, actually, from Xenoblade. But it's 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 kind of cool. Like, in the demo, you have, like, a typical, like, sword. But then, like, after you defeat the first boss, you get this guy's kind of like a spear. And uh, they each have their own move sets and different abilities. And one of the major hooks of the gameplay is your ability to shift between the world of the living and the dead which is used in both combat scenarios and exploration, which is interesting. The, the ingredients here are solid, but like the price isn't right and the performance isn't there. And like, just like the music wasn't really doing anything for me. The main character is a little bit of an asshole and I kind of don't like him. Like his name's like, I think it's Kagachi and he's just kind of a dick, like for no reason. It just he's like completely unlikable. I don't like him whatsoever. And I don't know. I just felt like there was a wall of glass between me and the game. And especially with the asking price, I just can't if the game were like 25 bucks, I would be much more willing to give it more of a pass. I'm like, okay, this is an indie game. Mm-hmm. But I mean, they're charging AAA prices for this game. I mean, $50 could get you Oninaki or it could get you a game like, you know, 10 more dollars, you could play Breath of the Wild. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's it's just hard to justify spending $50 on a game like Oninaki seems to be. I don't know. I I don't know. It's I'm conflicted. I'm conflicted by it. I, I would have been more willing to give it a free pass if they were charging a more fair price for it. But this is another this is a weird thing with Square Enix where they they kind of like charge more for their shit. They just do. It's like the Square Enix tax. Uh, I don't know. So anyway, that's that's only Naki. That's pretty much all I've got to say about it. I did not come away feeling very positive. I think the gameplay is fine. I think the world is cool. I I just wish it I just wish it gave me more to justify its price. I don't know. It's kind of where mm. I stand on it. I feel that. That's I don't know. Maybe I'll try the demo. I just uh, you didn't do enough to sell me on it. <laughs> well, I'm not. I'm not trying to sell you on it, but I'm. I but I. I think you should at least try the demo because I think you. I think you would like the gameplay, 
I think you, here's here's what I think. I think you would enjoy yourself playing the game. I don't think you would enjoy it enough to buy it, mm. but I think you would come away from it feeling like okay, if it has a price drop, I would I would probably be, you know buy maybe. it. Maybe maybe I'll give it a look. Yeah, I th- I think I think gameplay wise, there's enough in there for you to at least give it a look. Uh, Todd, that's all I've been playing. Not much in that in that respect, but we do have some news here. If you're ready to dig in. Let's do it. I got a small one to start. This is actually something that I just read about last night. A surprise update to Super Mario Maker 2 this week has doubled the amount of courses players can upload from 32 to 64. And Nintendo has also said that they plan on raising this number one more time in the future. So you can now... Small thing, but I just wanted to address it. Used to be you could only upload 32 courses. You can now upload 64 courses per course maker ID. So that's cool. I mean, I'm never going to make 64 courses in Mario Maker ever. And to be honest with you, I kind of feel like maybe I'm kind of done with Mario Maker a little bit. Because, like, I. Like, here's the deal. I made my three levels. I'm very happy with them. I'm very proud of them. I put 50 plus hours of time into the game. And like I have an idea for a fourth level, but I was kind of tooling around with it. And I just kind of like, I don't know. Just kind of felt like I'd rather be doing something else. Mm. I It's got me kind of feeling like Mario Maker 2 is really kind of more of a... Maybe it's because there just isn't enough newness in Mario Maker 2. I, I kind of wish that they had really amped up the amount of new content. It, it almost ends up feeling a little bit of like Mario Maker 1.5 to the point where I just feel like I'm kind of done making courses other than the ones I'm going to make for you. Like, I am I think I'm still going to piddle with it and make courses for you, and I'm really interested to see, because if it's anything like the way they handled Mario Maker 1, they're going to add a shit ton of content to this game with free updates and stuff, and I'm sure they're going to do that here. So it's going to be a thing where, like, whenever a new patch comes down, I'm going to hop on and see if there's anything that inspires me to make new courses. But for now, I'm kind of good. For now, I'm kind of just, like, good, kind of, you know, leaving it on the back burner, and I'll check back in later. I don't know. But this is surely cool news for people who uh, who are just uploading courses like fucking crazy. I'm sure they're out there. I'm sure they are people who have had their course, their 32 max for forever now i'm gonna save the marvel stuff for last just because there's such an embarrassment of news to talk about we're gonna end the show with the marvel talk (laughs) uh just there's just so much to unpack there but um recently many switch owners have reported they're experiencing joy con drift which is a condition where the stick on the joy con is detecting movement when the player is not touching it have you ever had this not with the joy con Oh, your pro controller does it. No, with the pro controller, I'm just, I've had situations like that with other controllers. Oh, really? Oh, like not on the Switch? Yeah. Okay, I thought you were saying one of your Switch uh, controllers. No, is no, doing... I'm, I'm shit. Please, my my Switch has been fine. It's funny because like I I did not have any Joy-Con drift issues until I started reading about it. That's what you get. It's weird. Like that's the... what you fucking get. I feel like the second that this started making the rounds in the news is when I started experiencing it. Now, and what I mean by that is I would take the Switch, and for the most part, I would say that I'm probably like 70-30. Like 70% of the time I'm playing my Switch, it's docked. And like 30% of the time it's handheld. So I would take my Switch out of the dock to make a Mario Maker level or something, and Mario is just moving to the left. Mm Mm-hmm. So, and then, like, it'll stop if I kind of, like, jiggle the stick for a second. It'll stop. But I'm like, oh, I guess I got a little bit of that Joy-Con drift. <laughs> but my left Joy-Con's fucked up anyway. Anastasia fucked it up. My my wife, she, she fucked it up basically immediately. As soon as I got my Switch. The fuck? Because, so, the, uh, the Joy-Cons have got... I don't know if you've really fucked with this at all, but they have the straps, right? That you slide yeah. onto there. Yeah. And she put them on, she put it on backwards. Oh. And Dude, why did people have issues with that? I don't know. But Wait, she, I, 
I, I, I, I'm, I gotta say that. Like, I remember when the Switch came out, motherfuckers had to, like, do a guide. I'm like, hey, this is how you put your Joy-Con shit on properly. I'm like, and I'm, like, sitting there. I'm like, what are people just, what? I, I didn't understand it. I was, I was, I was like, my mind was blown every time I was reading articles about it. I'm like, like people are just stupid. Like the fuck. It's. I don't even think it's that. I think it's. I think what it is, and in her case anyway, and and probably in a lot of people's cases, there's nothing that is like stopping you from doing it. So I think like, I think a lot of people have become so reliant on hardware and technology just working, that they don't. It doesn't enter in. I mean, you and I have been, you know, gamers our entire lives. So we have the kind of like mindset to think and, and kind of look and make sure we're doing things correctly. But for the general consumer, I think they just expect everything to just work. You know what mm. I mean? So, I feel that. so they just kind of slide it on, not realizing that it is not lined up properly and that it's backwards. And there's nothing stopping them from doing that. The only thing is. It doesn't fit properly when it's backwards and the railing has got it stuck. And you actually, what you have to do is you have to take like a screwdriver or a butter knife or something and like, and like pry the release latch. That's and fucking hilarious. So that's what I had to do to like unfuck this thing. And as a result of that, a, a common thing that happens when this issue occurs is that it will sort of degrade the locking mechanism on your railing. So now, my Joy-Con, like, with barely any pressure at all, I can completely remove it without having to push the little release Ooh, button. Ooh, that's not good. I can just pull it right off. So what I'm nervous about is that as it degrades more and more, I'm going to be, like, holding it, and it's just going to slip out of my hand. So that's what I'm really nervous about, and I don't want that. And now that Joy-Con is the one that's starting to have the drifting issue a little bit. So... I really want to get a new set of Joy-Con. I was hoping they were going to release... I, I'm not crazy about the colors that are coming out in October. So I think one of these days I'm just going to buy a new set of Joy-Con off of eBay or Amazon or something like that. There's actually... <laughs> this is really dumb. But I want to have a specific color combination that is really annoying because they don't sell them in, in the same pack. I would have to get two packs to do it. Mm -hmm. And I ain't trying to spend like two hundred dollars on Joy Cons. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. <laughs> so, anyway, that's that's a minor annoyance. It's something that's starting to happen with me a little bit. What I could do is I could do what Nintendo suggests that we do. They've issued a statement uh, telling customers who experience Joy Con drift to contact them via their customer support website. They say, "quote." At Nintendo, we take great pride in creating quality products, and we are continuously making improvements to them. We are aware of recent reports that some Joy-Con controllers are not responding correctly. We want our consumers to have fun with Nintendo Switch, and if anything falls short of this goal, we always encourage them to visit support.nintendo.com so we can help. End quote. Now, an interesting wrinkle in this is that according to the website Vice... Uh, Nintendo, they, they, I guess, got a hold of some internal emails uh, that were sent to the Nintendo customer support team, wherein Nintendo is telling them to offer repairs of the Joy-Cons that people are sending in for free, no questions asked. And in addition, if a customer has already, who is claiming that they've already paid for a repair in the past, they are to verify that they indeed paid for a repair in the past, and then immediately refund them for the repair. So... It sounds like Nintendo's making good on this and offering free repairs for your busted Joy-Cons. So, maybe that's what I'll do? I mean, I might just get another pair of Joy-Con and then send that one in to get repaired? I don't know. But it sounds like Nintendo's at least trying to make good by offering free repairs or refunds if you've already paid for repairs in the past. Mm -hmm. So that's nice. And I'm wondering if they've already identified the problem and if, like, future Joy-Con releases or current Joy-Con releases are not going to have these issues. So, anyway, that's that. Uh, if, you, if you have issues with Joy-Con Drift, contact support.nintendo.com. Get a ticket rolling. They'll take care of you, and it sounds like they'll even do it for free. So, uh, Todd... After a series of teases on Twitter, Blizzard has revealed the latest hero coming to Overwatch. Now, can I tell you how I found out about the new character? How? 
Because seriously, I don't use Twitter. I don't give a shit about Twitter. Uh, shit, I don't use most social media. I barely use Facebook. I could delete Facebook and it would mean nothing to me. <laughs> but I was on YouTube. And I'm like, what, randomly, an Overwatch video popped up, and I'm like, watching this fucker play, so like, play that. I'm like, I'm like, I've never seen this, these abilities. I was oh, like, what okay. is this? I was like, what is this shit? <laughs> so it was like somebody in the PTR. Yeah, I'm like, what is this shit? I mean, I just, I was like, what? Uh, and then I went to Google and I typed in Overwatch, and I'm like, oh, there's a new character. Yeah. Cool. Did you? So did you actually try it in the PTR? Uh, I, nah, I, I still need to. I'm, I do plan on doing that. Uh, okay. Just haven't get, haven't got around to it. Okay. He seems interesting though. Yeah. So this this, this character seen. this character's name is Sigma, and he seems like he's sort of like a mad scientist that has like figured out how to control gravity. And when I say mad scientist, I do mean mad scientist. Mm-hmm. Um. In the origin story animation trailer, which I assumed you watched. No, I didn't. Really? It's really good. Um, in this origin story animation trailer, it's revealed that Sigma tried to harness the power of a black hole. And in doing so, he lost his mind. And in the trailer, we see him in this sort of like mental asylum. And while Sigma is definitely on the kind of like villain side of things, Blizzard has said that Sigma doesn't know that he's being used. As a living That's, weapon. So I saw, I, I, I saw that. Like, so he's like, he's with Talon, but more not really doesn't really know what the fuck type, you know. Yeah, it seems like they're like Talon's kind of using him, and he doesn't, he he doesn't necessarily have a dog in the fight. He's just kind of a crazy. He doesn't really know what's going on, you know. So he he is a tank, right? Yes. I believe so. I have not actually okay. looked into his abilities and stuff because actually at the time I was gathering my notes. He was not on the PTR, and he now is. So I I know a little bit about it. Like his ult is that big old, uh, like basically he lifts up lifts up in the air or something. But basically he everyone basically gets flown up into the air, mm -hmm. and they it doesn't matter. Fifty percent of health is gone. Oh wow! Just instantly. Just basically as you land. Wow. Uh, okay. Then his like. His um, primary, like, gun is, like, I think he's, like, shooting, like, these orbs, basically. Kind of, like, Zenyatta-ish. Okay. Like, he, it's the things he has in his hand. And then I know he has an ability that can eat ults. Interesting. Bro, like, deadass eat, like, Dragon Strike, all that shit. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm looking at some of this stuff. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, he seems interesting. Like, I'm, I mean... Not, it, and then also he has like a shield. Uh, he has the portable, a uh, portable shield, yes. which works. It's similar to what Zenyatta. I uh, sorry, it's similar to what uh, Symmetra had a while back, uh, where she can like shoot a shield out. Right. But with this one, you shoot it out, but you can also control when it stops. Yeah, he can stop it whenever he wants and recall yes. it. Looks like interesting. Uh, he seems interesting. I'm like, I'm definitely like a part of me is like, oh shit. Kind of want, to, definitely want to jump on the PTR. Check him out. Seems like he's seems like his real his real kind of like Achilles heel is that he's so slow. Yeah, he doesn't have any movement ability. No for the most movement part. abilities at all. No. It looks like um, he's got two abilities. One called kinetic grasp and accretion. I guess kinetic grasp allows him to freeze projectiles in mid air and convert them into additional shields for his HP bar. And accretion lets him smash bull rushing fools with a big old rock, resulting in a brief stun. No. So, that's kind of cool. I like that. It's a good Reinhardt combo, but then, I mean, I got a good Reinhardt. Uh, uh, like a like a, a counter to Reinhardt. Counter, there yeah. You go. yeah, thank you. Interesting. Thing is, every everybody's a good counter to Reinhardt. <laughs> It's interesting, man. I, I, I you know, I, I always like it when a new Overwatch hero comes in. Everybody, everybody got, it's funny, as I know everybody was, like, sad, basically, because they really wanted, uh, I guess, the other buddy from uh, Baptiste shit. Yeah. Which, I didn't even know that was a thing people wanted, because I didn't really, well, I, I, I'm going to be honest, I've been, like, I don't really watch, like, Dude, the Overwatch, like, animations anymore. If, if there's a background character, somebody wants them to be a hero. Well, yeah, I remember, what is it, the, uh, 
the what's the the Ripper Queen or whatever the fuck. Yeah. The junk rats, uh, kind yeah. of yeah, whatever yeah. her name is. Everybody's like, oh, we want her. Yeah. They they that they, they, they like they don't give a shit about the actual character getting announced. They're like, who's that? Well, and that's <laughs> that that just goes to show how good like the world of Overwatch is, and the the characters are so solid that literally anybody pops up and somebody's like, I want to play as them. <laughs> literally anybody. The interesting thing about Sigma's design. The motherfucker's barefoot. I uh, know his toesy woesies. Isn't that weird? His toesy woesies are showing. Why does he need shoes? He floats. It's just weird. <laughs> it just there's. It tell seems... me, boy. Tell tell me. Does he need shoes? No. If he doesn't touch the ground. He doesn't need them. But there's something unsettling about it. <laughs> I kind of like... love it. <laughs> I saw that shit. I was laughing. There's just something. I'm looking at him right now. Just something unsettling. He's completely armored. Got this big the, badass gear, and then just and his toes, then his toes, toes. Are up. it's just his little piggies are exposed. <laughs> it's just odd. I'm just imagining when when they finally incorporate like you know big badass skins, and just his feet are gonna be hanging out. I uh, I'm telling you right now, they better keep his feet out. <laughs> I'm like I I want like this like these motherfucker skins. His feet still out. He's going to have just, like, these flaming pauldrons and shit like that. And just little feet hanging out. <laughs> Love it. Interesting. So, he's probably, as is the case, so he's currently live on the PC uh, PTR if you want to check him out. And uh, as is normally the case, he'll probably be live on consoles here in a couple weeks. So, that's usually the case with these Overwatch heroes. So, that's Sigma. Todd, uh, let's let's wrap up the show and talk about some of these Marvel announcements. Oh, good! I get to hear you bitch some more. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> no, I don't have anything to. Here, here's my thing is, and I'll talk about this as we're going. I'm not bitching about the announcements. Are all cool. Don't get me wrong. I'm excited about this stuff. I'm not. I have a beating heart. I'm not an idiot. <laughs> but my argument is that so. Marvel had this enormous Hall H panel at San Diego Comic-Con this week. And, of course, leading into this, everybody had the questions on their mind. You know, what's what do we got? What's what's Phase 4 going to be? You know, what now that, now that Endgame and the whole Infinity Saga is done, what's next for the MCU, right? So they, they had that kind of chip on their shoulder. They had that cross to bear uh, coming into this Hall H panel. And they certainly let us know what they have in the works because they lifted the curtain on like the next three years of Marvel content and even teased things that are going to be happening not even in Phase 4. Mm. So that therein lies my issue. And that just sort of... I, I, I'm of the mind that we do not need to know about all of this shit this early. It goes back to what we always talked about with like Bethesda announcing Elder Scrolls Six. Why do I need to know about this? Why do I now... Why is this now something that, that has to be... Like something I'm constantly reminded of... For the next several years until it finally comes out. And like... I remember when you came home from work and you are reading all the news... Your reaction was just like... That's cool. <laughs> and I'm like... Yeah, that's all you can glean from this. Like... I don't need to know about these movies coming out in fucking... You know, 2022 and beyond. Like, I don't need to know about all this stuff. I mean, it makes no difference. It means nothing. That means nothing. Like, for the public eye to know about this means absolutely nothing. You, what you what you should have done, I, I would have really liked it if they just came out and said, hey, like, we're not going to tell you, like, our entire fucking slate of Phase 4 movies. We're just going to tell you... that really nice graphic. Oh, yeah, no, it's... Uh, look... What I would have liked is if they just said, hey, like, here's what's happening in the next year, year and a half. And we'll see you next year. Because they're going to... I'm going to say something that I'm not a fan of from all this. Is these shows tying into the movies. Because I'm not trying to watch all these shows. Oh, but you're going to. And we're gonna, I don't we'll, want we'll to watch that. WandaVision that you're ties into fucking Doctor Strange, goddammit. You're going to, bitch. I don't want to. So... That's my that's my only problem with this. Now, I, I still think that a lot of these announcements are cool. I'm still I'm a Marvel fan. We cover the MCU movies a lot on this show, and I you know, again, I, I like I like the Marvel movies. I'm excited about the announcements. I just didn't need to hear all of this. 
This stuff is happening so far out. I just wish they would have told me what's happening in 2020. And then next year, because they're going to they're gonna be back at Hall H next year. Just tell me, just give me a year at a time. I don't need to know everything you're going to be feeding me. Mm-hmm. Anyway. So I'm going to start with the film announcements, and I'm going to talk about the film announcements chronologically. All right. There's also some TV announcements that I'll get into, but let's start with the movies. So, the first movie that we're going to see chronologically is going to be the Black Widow movie, which is slated for May 1st, 2020. This is a movie that we've kind of quietly known about for a long time. It's been shooting for a long time, and we've actually seen, like, set photos and concept art, and we've known about it, but Marvel has never actually officially announced it until now. And it's coming out May 1st. It's going to take place after Captain America Civil War and before Infinity War. All right? Yeah. Yeah. They showed a teaser trailer showing the city of Budapest, which has been referenced in the movie several times. So, we know that Taskmaster is in the movie. We've seen concept art and footage of him. Uh, we don't know if he is going to be the main villain or if he's just going to be kind of a side villain. There's a lot we don't know. But Black Widow getting her own movie, May 1st, 2020. What, what do you make of that? I mean... I mean, I guess I'll watch it. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to learning a little bit more about her backstory mm. and uh, her past and stuff. I mean, that's something that we've always kind of flirted with, especially yeah, in they, Age of Ultron. They kind of like yeah, they, they touched on it. In Age touched of on it. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't didn't really I mean, get too I, deep. I'm down for I'm down for Taskmaster though. Taskmaster is a really cool character. I'm not. I don't know how I feel about his design based on what we've seen. Uh, yeah. Because he seems, they seem like they've gone a more like militaristic, frankly more realistic route. I, I understand why they I did mean, it. It makes sense to you know kind of ground it a little bit, but I mean I wouldn't mind getting a little dumb with like give me give me the give me the give me the give me the cloak, give me the fucking. It's it's uh, odd when like you see these superhero movies sort of. It seems like they're sort of embracing the silliness of some of the characters a little bit more i mean in a world where we have dead ass red skull like it would it really be so ridiculous to have taskmaster look like he's supposed to yeah i mean I, personally i don't think he looks that crazy honestly so in the concept art we have i'm looking at it right now in the concept art for taskmaster we have here i mean he looks very militaristic he still kind of has like the hood and he still has like the shield but he doesn't have like a skull. He has like a kind of like metallic armored face mask with kind of a visor on it. Looks very he looks like a G.I. Joe villain, you know? Which is fine. It, it'll be interesting to see, because obviously Taskmaster's whole thing is he kind of like instantly memorizes whatever moves you're throwing at him. So it'll be interesting to see the choreography of the fight scenes between Black Widow and Taskmaster. I'm looking forward to that. I think that's going to I think that's going to work out really beautifully. And I, I think this could this could make for a really cool spy action movie. Yeah. Uh, we we don't know much about it. We know David Harbour's in the movie. We don't know what role he's going to play, so that that'll be interesting. Uh coming May 1st. Um another 2020 movie is going to be The Eternals. And that's slated to be released on November 6, 2020. It's got a star-studded cast with uh, ladies like Angelina Jolie and Salma Hayek in the cast. So, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know that much about the Eternals. I, I was about to say the same thing. I don't really know much about the Eternals, so I'm like... And that actually sort of excites me. Well, yeah. That's, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. Like, maybe it'll be like a... Maybe it'll be like how Guardians was for me. Well, like At even first. even Guardians, I sort of knew a little bit. I mean, I, I mean, I knew more about the Guardians than I did about the the Eternals. Exactly I'll say that. Exactly. So I'm kind of yeah, I'm kind of potentially this could and and the thing about the Eternals, from what I understand, is the Eternals are like kind of like weird. They're they're like they they have like this weird like proto human kind of thing where like we've seen sets where there's like Mayan temples and shit like that. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think this could be pretty interesting. I'm I'm definitely surprised that they're going for this right out the gate, and and I'm curious and I'm excited to uh, to see what you know exactly what's going on. Uh, this is exciting. Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Yeah. 
is coming February 12th, 2021. Uh, what really has me excited about this is that the MCU producer, Kevin Feige, we all love Kevin Feige, he revealed that the Mandarin will be in the film. The real Mandarin. The real Mandarin will be in the film, and he's going to be played by famed Hong Kong actor Tony Leung. So that's going to be really cool to see. I, I'm very excited about that. Apparently, uh, he, he has said that there there's... Um, I, I And I feel like I heard about this. There's a Ten Rings Easter egg in Ant-Man and the Wasp, I guess, that uh, that kind of is is nodding to this. And we've known what? that... It, yeah, I guess there's a Ten Rings Easter egg in Ant-Man and the Wasp. So... And uh, we, we've known that a Shang-Chi movie was in development for a while. So that's, that's up. That's going to be part of Phase 4. And Kevin Feige said during this panel that Phase 4 is going to be a lot of, like meeting a lot of new characters, you know, it's going to be about kind of touching base with, with some of the old characters, but it's, it's really going to be about building up new characters. Yeah. Now that, you know, end game saw sort of the end for a lot of old characters we're we're going to be touching with a lot of new ones. It's not just going to be the same cycle that, that we're kind of used to. Uh, on May 7th, 2021, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness will be released with director Scott Derrickson returning to direct. And Scott Derrickson said that this will be the first uh, MCU horror movie, basically. Yeah, I saw that. I'm like, I want to watch a scary movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it seems like this is he, he is calling this kind of a Lovecraftian, like gothic horror uh, the multiverse of madness, and he's also I'm like, kind I'm of. Down. I'm down too. Yeah, I'm down too. And he's kind of hinted in the past at the so the character Nightmare is a character that Scott Derrickson wanted to tackle in the first Doctor Strange, but because because a Doctor Strange two was never like a surefire thing, he he wanted to make sure in the first one you got Dormammu. Dormammu's like you got to have Dormammu, right? Of course, of course. So it stands to reason that now in the multiverse of madness or whatever, Nightmare might be the villain of this one. And if he's talking about Lovecraftian horror, I could see side villain like Shumagorath would be mm -hmm. cool. So interesting that he's calling this a straight up horror movie, especially, you know, Derrickson has his roots in horror. He was the director of Sinister. So, which is actually a pretty damn good horror movie. Yeah, Sinister's up there uh, on some of the one of the best like modern for me. It, modern it is horror movies. it is a good modern horror movie. Uh, this may be the most interesting announcement of the Hall H panel for me in terms of the movies. Anyway, the fourth Thor movie, which is coming on November fifth, twenty twenty one, is called Thor: Love and Thunder. Ragnarok director Taika Waititi is returning. And it seems like the plot of this movie will deal with Valkyrie, who is now the new ruler of Asgard, looking for her queen. Kind of piggybacking off of that, Natalie Portman took the stage. And uh, this movie will see the return of Natalie Portman's Jane Foster taking on the role of female Thor. She took the stage with uh, Mjolnir in hand. What do you what do you make of that? It's whatever. It's interesting. Eh. I'm wondering if they're going to, like... Is this going to be a Thor movie where, like, like Chris Hemsworth is, like, not even in it? No, he's going to be in it. He's probably just going to be side character up the ass. Like, is, is this going to be, like, really primarily Valkyrie and Jane Foster's movie? I mean, that that's that's kind of the big question. It's, it's interesting. I, and, it, you know, it was funny. I tweeted at Ahmed Best. So Ahmed Best was tweeting about... Uh, Natalie Portman, uh, Ahmed Best, for those who don't know, is the actor who played Jar Jar. He's kind of like come back into the public eye as of late. And anyway, he was tweeting about how proud he is of Natalie uh, Natalie Portman. And I tweeted back at him, and it got a little bit of attention. I was like, now we just need to see Ahmed Best as Beta Ray Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how much I would love that? Yeah, it would be some good shit. Especially since we got that little like Beta Ray Bill Easter egg in Ragnarok. Yeah. With his statue at the Colosseum or whatever. Mm -hmm. I would love to see Ahmed Best as a CG 
Beta Ray Bill. It'd be so good. I, I, I love the character of Beta Ray Bill, and I, I would I would love to see him pop up in this. And like Taika YTT, especially with Ragnarok, like I love Thor Ragnarok, and that movie was so like just buck wild. And I hope he brings that same energy to I this. Lo- I love how people actually had to ask, like, uh, does Thor 4 take place before Guardians 3? Right. It a- does. And uh, and James Gunn did have to come out and yeah. confirm that. Now, and, and I'm glad I'm glad you said that, because that makes for a good segue. Because, so, you know, Marvel, uh, Marvel has said that they are going to make, like, Black Panther 2, Guardians 3, Captain Marvel 2... And actually, the Fantastic Four are also going to play a part of the next phase following the Infinity Saga. So Guardians 3 is still happening, but because of the recent kind of like influx of everything happening with James Gunn, we don't know anything about dates. And a lot of people are like, well, where was Captain Marvel 2 and Black Panther 2? They're happening. Chill out. <laughs> Marvel just isn't ready to talk about that yet. Can I say, I'm going to say something. Uh, well, they finally do the Fantastic Four, right? I'm sure they will. I'm sure they will whenever they but get the around to thing, it. the real thing, will they do Doom? Right. Uh, I, I actually, I sort of hope that they don't do Doom at all. At least for the first one. Oh, I say, do, no Doom at all, go fuck yourself. <laughs> no, not for the first Not for the first one. I kind of hope that they don't touch on Doom. Just leave, just leave them alone for the first one. But that, uh, that's so far in the future. I don't... I, I want... Uh, you know, I need I need Doom done right, though. This is this is the kind of shit, though, that I'm talking about. I didn't need to know that... Of course you're going to do something with the Fantastic Four. And they... So, another thing they announced was that they have plans in this phase to make a Blade movie. Which apparently is only happening because... Apparently... Well, Buddy actually asked about that. Like, the, the guy that's playing him. Yeah, Mahershala Ali, I think is his name. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I prefer to just call him Ali. <laughs> Well, that Mahershala is actually a shortened version of his name. Oh dear lord! If you really want to fucking try try to pronounce something, look up his full fucking name. It's like Mahershala Hashishabash. It's like it's like Shit. it's like this long. It looks like you just like closed your eyes and just mashed your hands on the keyboard for two seconds. What the fuck? Um, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, yeah. So he's gonna be playing the the titular. Uh, Vampire Hunter Marvel is going to be making a new Blade movie, which is cool. I love Blade. I think Blade's a great character, and I'm I'm thrilled that Blade's coming back. I love the Fantastic Four. I'm thrilled that they've got the Fantastic Four. But why the you don't even have dates? You don't even have vague three year out dates for these movies. Why say anything about them at all? I don't need to know that. That just goes back to what I was saying earlier. So anyway. Uh, yeah, James Gunn said that, you know, Guardians is happening still, don't worry, but I'm finishing Suicide Squad first. A lot of people also were taking umbrage with the fact that, uh, there was no announcement of a new Spider-Man movie, uh, in, in this kind of Phase 4 discussion. Don't worry. Don't freak out. That doesn't necessarily mean that there won't be a Spider-Man. I'm sure there's going to be a Spider-Man movie two years from now in 2021. The, the issue with that is that Marvel actually does not have the rights to announce that. Sony does. Yep. Yep. So Sony has to be the one to make that announcement. And I'm sure we're going to hear about that, you know, anytime now that a new Spider-Man movie is coming. And I'm sure it's coming in 2021. It'll just release in a two-year cycle. It's going to be fine, guys. In the world of television, Marvel has got plenty of plans to bring major shows to the Disney Plus streaming service, and it seems like those who care about the MCU at large are going to want to pay close attention. Todd. You're going to have shows to watch, whether you like it or not. I hate it. Honestly, if you don't want to watch these, it's like, I'm not going to be watching all these. I'm just going to fucking read about it. (laughs) That's that's basically what I plan (laughs) on doing. If you want to try to tie into some bullshit, I'm just going to read. So... I'm, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go in chronological order here. The Falcon and the Winter Soldier uh, has been dated for a fall 2020 release with Anthony Mackie and Sebastian Stan reprising their roles. Anthony Mackie had the iconic Cap Shield on stage as he talked about exploring Falcon as a character with this show. So that's interesting. It seems like, it almost seems like they're like, hey, we're not going to touch on these Avengers kind of characters, but we're going to give them their show and explore that shit there. I mean, that's, that was always, again, we, that was our problem 
with him getting the shield anyways because he wasn't really a character. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I hope that, you know, no pun intended here, but but I hope that the show really gives him a chance to spread his wings a little bit and and kind of come into his this, own. Out of all the shows, this is the one I'm, I will probably watch. This is the one I'm most interested in, for sure. Yes, and I'm, I'm very happy with uh, other buddy coming back. Yeah, I, I would love to see more of you know Sebastian Stan. As oh, I'm Bucky. not even talking about that. I'm, t- I'm talking about uh, the villain. <laughs> oh, I must have missed that. Who's who's the villain? Oh, dude, uh, Zemo. Oh, yeah, I completely missed that. I didn't know that Zemo. Bro, was... dude, they got him in the actual purple fucking shit. Oh, cool. Yeah, they had the teaser where he puts on the fucking purple mask and shit. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I, I totally missed that. Yeah. Yeah, Z- Zemo was a cool character. I'm, I'm glad they're circling back to that. Because Zemo was cool even in the movie. Yeah, so yeah, they're br- he's going to be the villain of this. Uh, I'm surprised you missed that, yeah. Yeah, I, I completely missed Yeah, they missed had him that. in, like, basically, I guess in, like, the teaser, it was, like, him, like, on a video, like, uh, on a video, like, uh, in a video. And you kind of see that he has, like, the start of, like, the co- the actual, like, comic outfit. Yeah, I see it here with the collar and everything. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, it's good shit. Very good shit. Oh, that's cool. It's cool that they're actually going that route with him because I, I actually the actor Daniel Bruhl, I I like him a lot. No, oh, he's, so, he's he was he was he was a highlight. Of he that was movie. really good. So I yeah I'm that's that's cool. I didn't know I somehow I missed that. Here well here's the problem with kind of like reading about news, is like you're kind of at the mercy of the news site because mm-hmm. like. I, I just kind of gathered my news from various sources. I didn't actually watch any of the Hall H panel. So I, you know, I, I just, uh, cherry picking like that, you're just inevitably going to gonna miss some uh, shit. It's, uh, I'm, I'm happy I didn't miss it. Yeah, that's cool. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing that. We talked about this a little bit, or you talked about this a little bit earlier. WandaVision was announced for spring 2021. Uh, the show will star Elizabeth Olsen and Paul Bettany as Scarlet Witch and The Vision. Kevin Feige says that the show is going to get very strange, which is, you know, obviously hinting at the fact that Doctor Strange, as well as other MCU characters, are going to appear in the show. And as you said earlier, Scarlet Witch uh, was later confirmed to be appearing in Doctor Strange 2 as well. So it seems like that show is going to intimately tie into Doctor Strange 2 in some way. So, I don't know. This doesn't really do anything for me. Like... This whole the WandaVision thing doesn't really I don't really care about this. Mhm. I like I'm I'm into like weird shit happening, but like and I'm I'm certainly interested to see what they're going to do with Vision, but like I don't know. I don't care all that much. I mean, it's going to be cool for the people who like have always been complaining that they don't buy their love interest stuff. Now we're actually going to have a show that kind of has room to breathe with that and kind of like kind of accentuates their relationship a little bit. Mm. That's, that's cool. I just, I don't, I don't think that show is going to be for me, but I'm going to give all of these a chance at least Uh, around the same time. Also slated for spring 2021 is Loki, a Loki series, which will be Mm. directly connected to the scene in Avengers Endgame where he steals the Tesseract. So that'll be interesting. We don't know much about it other than that, but I mean, hey, it's a Loki series. It's Tom Hiddleston. That sounds pretty fucking good to me. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's kind of all I need to know <laughs> to have that uh, confirmed. So, uh, this was actually maybe the the series that interests me the most. Marvel's What If series. Oh yeah, yeah. In summer 2021. So this will be their first Marvel Studios animated series. It's going to be narrated by the Watcher, exploring what if scenarios with uh, many it's members. Like, it's funny. It's gonna be like some like Twilight Zone ish. <laughs> yeah, exactly, and that's that's why I'm excited about it. Yeah. So the, it's gonna explore what if scenarios with many members of the MCU reprising their roles for the show. So I'm very into that. There, there was one, uh, I think they, they, they said that they're going to do one where it's like, what if Peggy Carter got the super soldier serum or whatever? Oh shit. Yeah. So this is going to be and they're They're animated. So you can really go crazy with it. And I like the idea that it's narrated by the watcher who is sort of like seeing all of these different realities. So it kind of makes sense even in the context of the show's narrative. 
that sounds really exciting to me. Yeah, kind of kind of Marvel Twilight Zone a little bit is a really good way of I'm, thinking I'm about it. Yeah, I, I saw I saw that like on the uh, on like the 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 fucking like bracket basically. I was like, awesome. <laughs> That's the one that that was the show where I was like, okay, I'm definitely going to be checking that out. Uh, finally, in fall 2021, we will see the release of a Hawkeye series starring Jeremy Renner. Kate Bishop is also confirmed to be in the series in an unknown role, and Kevin Feige said that the series will explore more of his time as the Ronin. Ooh. So, yeah. Yes. Okay, that, that's up on my list now. So we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. It sounds. I, I that's I would love to see that. So this is basically going to take the take place like between the snap and like when uh you know Black Widow finds him. Because I mean that's a five year gap. There's plenty Dude, of storytelling potential there. Let me tell you right fucking there, I'm down because I want to see the the journey of that shit. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like that's exactly what this show is going to tackle. So I'm down. I'm down. I'm interested for sure because I even liked even just that quick scene that we got in Endgame of him as the Ronin was a really cool scene. Oh, that's good, man. So definitely excited by some of the stuff. I'm, uh, you know, and, and again, we're gonna have the stuff like like Black Panther and Captain Marvel and Spider Man. It's gonna be peppered in throughout all of this too. Uh, I would expect in the next few years, plenty of Marvel content. Marvel is not going fucking anywhere, Todd. He's Marvel is here to stay. <laughs> you got plenty of stuff so i don't know what's your what's your feeling coming away from some of these announcements i mean that's cool <laughs> right that's cool what what are you most excited about uh dr strange yeah just movie wise dr strange yeah i'm really kind of interested in the eternals like i'm really interested in that I'm curious always, how they're going to go. The thing, thing with me is I've always liked Doctor Strange. Oh, same. I, mean, I love Doctor yeah. Strange. I'm curious how they're going to how they're going to like kind of handle the the Thor stuff too. And look, in Taika Waititi, we trust. Ragnarok's like one of my favorite MCU movies, so he he has earned a free pass in my opinion. So I, I I'm just putting all of my faith in him, and we we will see how that goes. I also think Black Widow's got some potential. I mean, it's 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 some exciting stuff. The TV shows, notwithstanding, I'm not really like, I'm not a big TV watcher. Yeah, it's, it requires more time. And there's but, just nothing like, uh, you know, I'm interested in like the Hawkeye show, and I'm interested in you know Falcon and Winter Soldier. The, and, honestly, the main two, I mean, the main th- it's three now that I'm like okay with. It's like I'm interested in the Falcon. You know, the Falcon show, the what if, and then the Hawkeye. I'm like, WandaVision and Loki, I'm like, eh. I mean, I might watch it. but What what if is going to be the big one for me? I, I feel like I can definitely see myself watching that entire series. But again, it, it's, it's funny that that is kind of the ones that I'm most interested in are actually the ones where I'm like, it doesn't really play into the MCU at large. Even though that's kind of what they want. They're, they... They and I think they think that that's what the fans want. I think they think that the fans want it to be some big. Oh, we want it to matter. We want to watch these shows and we want it to have important story beats that are going to matter in the, in the movies also. And I don't. That's not really attractive to me, to be honest. I want the movies to be the movies and the TV shows to be the TV shows. Now I like that they're interconnected and that you're using the same actors and stuff like that. But I don't want to like have to keep up with the events of WandaVision to understand Doctor Strange too, you mm. know. So I don't know. But I came away from from this Hall H panel. I you know I'm positive about the future of of the MCU. I'm looking forward to it. Some interesting new characters getting their own movies. My feeling about the delivery of the news, notwithstanding, the news that was delivered was good news. I'm certainly certainly happy to be hearing about some of this stuff. Uh, but that's about all I've got this week, Todd. So unless you got anything else to add, I think we should wrap this bad boy up. Well, that's about it, man. Let's stamp it and ship it, Todd. Ship it out to the kids at home. Thanks for listening, folks. We'll catch you next week. Get fucking dunked on. Bye. See ya. Hey there, thanks for checking out another fantastic Nerd Bourbon video. If you like what you saw and you want to see more, be sure to go ahead and subscribe, leave us a like. Drop us a nice comment or I guess a mean one if that's 
if that's your prerogative. But uh, until next time, get dunked on.